this is the Far Cry we're reviewing. You guys got bamboozled. Arcade is the latest addition to the robust level editor that always comes bundled with Far Cry. Only this time, Little Cry Planet is coming packaged with a Ready Player One aesthetic and so many assets that you can make five extra level genres out of the usual three. And it's a lot like Little Big Planet in the sense that you're going to be sifting through a lot of trash and memes in order to find anything half decent. Don't be stupid, be a smarty, come and join the Nazi party. Now my reasoning for covering the level editor first instead of the main course is simply for three reasons. Reason number one is so I can cover the gunplay and its minor improvements over the previous incarnations with a mode that's solely focused on gameplay rather than the story, and also so I can bitch about the weapon variety or lack thereof. Reason number two is redundant because it is. Reason number three, the menus. See, this menu is really, really shitty, these buttons are too big, these buttons are really, really tiny, you can barely see what the hell is going on, so I'm going to propose a change. As you can see, my menu has a lot of really neat features, and is featured on one fucking page instead of three. Ubisoft, please take my changes seriously, and never mind the fact that you were practicing late stage- So anyway, you click on PvE because you're wanting to mow down some mindless Montanans- Oh wait, just Montanans, I don't know why I wrote the same word twice. Then, you want to find a map that'll suit your tastes, but what's this, there's only two pages of maps? Well, sometimes there's only one, and that can't be right, because it's been several months since this game has come out, and there should be an ocean of god-awful levels to play. Well, that's because you're in the featured maps, and you don't know this because the game doesn't tell you this, because you have to hit the F button for filters. Alright, now you have some options, you can pick the type of game mode, but strangely enough you can't sort by genre tags, so if you want to play some horror maps, you're just gonna have to click on the thumbnails that have a lot of blacks, along with a few reds, maybe some bloods as well, no crypts though, we ain't fucking flying those flags around here. Then we have the categories, we're in the featured section, that's the reason why there isn't that many good maps. If you select all, you get the normal map browser, which should be, you know, the default. Next is the favorites, where the favorited maps go. The maps that you favorite. After that is the maps you've published. Then you have the workshop. What the fuck is the workshop? Does it have Steam support? Nope. Workshop is where all the gimmicky, terrible, and underdesigned maps end up. So all the shitty, untextured, and low qu- Best maps end up here. And if you're playing the PvE, that means normal maps get grouped in here too, because no one really knows what the fuck is going on. So you finally found your map, the map you wish to play. You boot it up and you either have a fun time, or you have one of the worst gaming experiences of your life. So let's say you win, you get to watch your XP go up, and then you get to rate the map, and you better make goddamn sure of your opinions on if you liked it or not, because as far as I know, you can't change your rating on it. So if you're just unsure about a map, skip the rating process and give it a few more playthroughs, and then make your choice. No! Oh! Fall into the mighty durst. Now if you lose, you're not asked if you'd like to try again immediately. Instead, you're kicked to the progression menu, gotta watch that XP rise up. Then, you are asked if you liked or disliked the level, which is fucking brilliant, by the way, because somebody might have gotten mad at the level and they just disliked it out of spite. And then, after that, you can retry the level. I should also mention you can't skip any of this. You have to watch your XP bar tick up, and if you haven't chosen your rating on a map, you have to sit there for six seconds and wait for the remaining time to, you know, count down. Which, you know, it makes sense if you're playing with other people, but if I'm sitting alone in my underwear trying to power through some arcade levels for this fucking review, then just take my goddamn vote and let me get into the next map, which gets me into my next problem. You have two choices when it comes to playing a new map. Either you hit the play another map button, in which you get thrown into a Ubisoft map or the same map you played three minutes ago, and once, it, you know, you play it enough times, like maybe five levels in, it'll just start repeating itself until you finally back out to the main menu. 
So the other way of playing a new map is just quitting back to the main menu, going into the menu again, the other menu. I, there's a lot of menus with arcade. Then you gotta hit F, and then you gotta do the fucking things again, and then you can continue browsing from there. So why isn't there a continue browsing option? Is it that hard to program? I mean, I love the idea of having a new map randomly picked out for me. Hell, that's the main draw of doing Arcade Hero, but if the game is running out of ideas, I'd rather just continue from where I left off and find a new map that looks interesting to me. Oh yeah, Arcade Hero. Remember when I talked about workshop maps? Well, imagine an entire mode dedicated solely to those maps, and it's just, it's virtual dumpster diving. Sometimes you can find a diamond in the rough where even though it looks like shit, plays like shit, probably smells like shit, and doesn't seem to have been playtested at all, you can still have fun because Far Cry is a fun sandbox to play in. So allow me to show you an example of what I'm talking about. Video games! Hey Goblin, is this your school? Fuck off. No, I, I, I don't think I ever told you that, but, but there was once this crazed black lady, this like really crap black girl, that yeah. once took her top off in the in the uh, on the playground and they had to she she ran into one of the on site sheds to grab a weapon to assault the teachers and staff with. If only a, <laughs> I, you should you should, probably should have grabbed the shovel, I imagine they'd be a bit more effective. I am Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the bats scattering the fucking ground! Oh, no, I don't know how What What the? You saw that, right? Where did he go? Oh, oh there he is! <laughs> what would make this better? You, you, know what he, you know what he did? He jumped up to the number of chromosomes he had and fell back down to his IQ. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. It is absolutely mean. <laughs> Jesus Christ! The bodies Far are piling up too much, they're actually blocking my bats! You've almost killed all of them entirely with baseball bats. <laughs> Throwing baseball bats. Okay, kill the last guy with like a, a fucking radicolio. Oh, dude. Where's that shovel at? Actually, you know what? Fuck the shovel. Where's that hoe? Ah, there's the hoe. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's the best map ever. No, it's fun. The multiplayer side of things is completely dead because I don't think anybody knows that Arcade Hero exists. Not a singular soul. I don't even think God himself knows Arcade Hero exists. Oh yeah, what's your reward for going virtual dumpster diving by the way? Double XP. Which moves us into the progression which, you know, keeps moving ever onwards to rewards that aren't that substantial. Listen, you'll get $800 in like a singular perk point per level, which doesn't mean shit in the single player because half the perks in single player cost like five to seven points and not all of them carry over into arcade. It's just, it's really dumb. So let, let's just get into the money part of it. So there's a weapon shop in arcade and $800 stacks up after quite a few levels. Then you realize you don't get to pick loadouts in arcade. The map creators do, so you have your weapons show, like selected for you. But you can still buy weapons, granted that you have them unlocked in the single player, but what's the point? Well, single player is the point, and the other point is weapon skins. You already know that there's microtransactions in this game, and you'll see that I have almost 1k Ubisoft fun bars. And no, I didn't spend a loony on this game outside of actually purchasing it. And all the silver I have is what I unlock through the challenges and finding them in the base to game. And the incentive behind them is to just make things unlock quicker, essentially. So you could spend almost 8k on that cool AK, or you could just spend 250 Ubisoft fun bars and get it quicker. Now, I would talk about the in-game economy and how broken it is with just two drugs and ten bears, but I don't want Ubisoft thinking that their entire microtransaction scheme is flawed. Prestige weapons are the guns that we see in their own little category that aren't classed as just premium weapon skins, but as premium weapons themselves. So that means if you buy this tacky 1911 because you like the extended slide on it and think you get to play with it in the multiplayer, fucking you're wrong, boy. As it's not a 1911, but a 1911 extended Golden RE with its own set of attachments that don't carry over from your base 1911. This finally brings me to the weapon selection. At a glance, it looks like there's a wide variety of armaments. 
But then you take a closer look and realize that there's more clones in here than there was in Smash Melee. For example, you have the 44 Snubnosed, then you have the 44, then you have the 44, and then finally you got THE 44. And the only stat differences between all of them lay between the Snubnosed and the rest of the extended barreled boys. Then you have three different MP5s, with one being the objective best. Then you have two different AKs, two different 4570s, and two different M14s that have no differences between them outside of aesthetics. So why not just have one gun and just have all these cosmetic options within that menu? Well, because if they did that, you'd realize how few weapons there are in this game, especially when compared to Far Cry 4, that had every weapon under the sun and then some. So if we removed all the clones and put them into, the, like, just categories, we would have a total of five handguns, three one-handed SMGs, one handheld shotgun, a one-handed grenade launcher, only three different shotguns if we made all the M133s into their own weapon class, and I could go on longer and longer about the lack of weapon variety and splice more videos on top of each other, but I don't care anymore, so the complaint basically boils down to, I just want more weapons. So how about the shooting itself? Let's talk about that gunplay. Well, it's almost the same as 3 and 4, but strangely enough, it took some inspiration from Far Cry 2's enemies that refuse to die if you're playing on anything higher than normal. Explosions and homicidal car tendencies mean nothing to some of these guys. They play dead for a moment, only to clamber up back to their feet, even more pissed off than they were before. And they can also go into a similar bleed-out mode like they could in 2, which you can use to bait out other enemies as they try to desperately save their friend. But the improvement here is that when the enemies are bleeding out in this game, they can't pull out their pistol and continue the fight like they could in 2. Oh yeah, bullet physics are a thing now. Weapons aren't hit scan anymore, and you actually have to place your shots if you're more than 5 feet away from your enemy. It's a neat addition, and it's mostly noticeable on sniper rifles. And it makes them more engaging to use because they aren't instant death lasers anymore. So, you gotta think a little bit before taking a shot. If I had anything to compare it to, it would- it feels a little bit like Bad Company 2's bullet physics, in a way. Oh, fuck yeah, I love the residents. And another major change is how healing is handled now. Gone are the days of performing Glasgow surgery on your left arm to restore your health. Now you just have to wait behind cover until your blood slowly inches its way back into your broken and battered body. At least, it's that way on hard. It takes forever to regen on hard. I haven't played normal because I'm not a baby. Oh yeah, medkits are more like they were in Far Cry 2. You can't craft them, but you can sure as shit find them. Or if you're playing in the single player, you can purchase them from the store. These are your lifeblood and should only be used for when you're certain you don't got three minutes of quiet time so your body can regenerate itself. I don't really know how I feel about the system. On the one hand, I think it's a really good change since I rarely used medkits in 3 and 4 because the perks in those games made your ghetto surgery so good that there was no point in legalizing Greenleaf. But on my other hand, I wrote down that I do miss the shock value of seeing how badly my character injured themselves and seeing the improv way that they would fix themselves. I also feel like it could have been in the game still if they borrowed even more from Far Cry 2's health system and you had your health segmented into bars. So if you get sent into the last bar, you had to use a med kit to stabilize yourself or you perform your Compton medical check. Or, you know, we could have like an optional drug that's super expensive to craft that speeds up your health regeneration time and only regenerates it up to... Half. Sorry about that, I ran out of room on my hand. So, before I talk about the level editor itself, um, I, would I quickly want to touch upon the driving in Far Cry 5. It has tractors, so it's great. And handling could be a little bit less slippery uh. on muscle cars, but I guess you're trading traction for speed. And all in all, I think the driving's fine. It, it, it's fun. I think we could use a little bit more truck customization, considering we're in Montana. But that might be my inbred moonshiner blood speaking through me. I want the blood out of my body. It's impure. All right, level editor time. Let's make this quick, cause I got dinner in the oven. <sighs> the smell of pork. The level editor is super robust and you can make about anything your imagination desires as long as it fits within the category of prison, city, Far Cry 3. Ta-da! <laughs> Creepypasta.net some bullshit, or Montana. I'm just playing, of course. There's a lot of variety to be had in the maps. You know, you got your Mirror's Edge maps, you got your prison maps, you got your space maps, but the problem is that everything, all the maps kind of start bleeding in with each other 
because there's only so many assets you can use in this game. And I don't blame the map makers themselves because there's only so much you can do with Watch Dogs and Far Cry assets. So when you're making a space map, it's probably gonna look like the other space maps because there's only there's just there's like there's only so much you can use is what I'm saying. But like I said, I gotta make this quick because my dinner is quickly becoming charcoal and I just want to fire off my thoughts in rapid succession. So let's go this. Why can't the budget meters give me actual numbers? I would really like to see a hard number on the amount of things I can place and see how much memory my map is taking up. Maybe have it as an option. I wish we could place down actual AI pathing and patrol routes. There is a workaround where you can place animation points in a linear path and just set the cooldowns on them so that they idle from point to point. But but it's not 100% considering I've seen some NPCs walk across my entire map to stare at a brick wall that was supposed to be somebody else's brick wall to stare at. So thus, it ruined the feng shui of my map. I also wish that when we were testing the map, we had the options to switch between an upgraded deputy and a not upgraded deputy, because no upgrades deputy sucks. He doesn't come equipped with features that the normal deputy has in the base game, like reloading while aiming down the sights, for example. And I also think letting us have a fully upgraded deputy in the testing map section would probably cut down on the amount of map spam you see in the arcade editor right now. And finally, is just the limit. Limitations. I get that not all of us have the biggest and beefiest computers, especially those on consoles, but I think having a limits pushing category for some maps would be a really neat idea where we could see some shit that was truly wild or taking this engine to its absolute limits. But then again, I realized that this would only end up with war maps that is just the same 200 NPCs copy pasted over and over again in a flat plane with no cover and you get to watch from a vantage point. Coupled with the fact that you'd probably have to download the several terabyte map that lasts for about four minutes before crashing your entire system, but I'd still like the option to push the limits, is what I'm saying. And seeing as it will eventually get updates for more game modes, more assets, and just more of everything as time goes on, I have nothing but high hopes for Arcade. Well, high hopes for its co-op and PvE functionality. Multiplayer in Far Cry games has always been a bit stinky, serving more as a fun distraction for your friends for a couple of days before you all quickly forget about it and go back to playing Siege. Rush out there and fucking fuck the room. Don't eat. I might end up giving Daddy. you guys a fresh request because- Daddy! 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 Daddy, I want the- I want- You lost a child today, peeps. Yeah, there was that. He was the weak one. I was- I was the weakest link, yes. He was the hiccup of the family. <laughs> Dad! No! This is some intense diaper for RP. I mean, just straight. God. Siblings, if I am to die, know that my collection of 36 Pokemon cards I stole from other kids will be buried with me. <laughs> but, you know, I think playing new maps is, is great in multiplayer. I just really wish that we could choose our own loadouts because I want to bring five RPGs with me. But I think if if you wanted to prevent that from happening, I think we could like let the map makers be like, okay, we can you can only have one RPG, or you can have one shot. You know, like I don't know, like have like a pre-game where you can just pick your loadout real quick, boom, done. So one more thing though is that I didn't even write this in and I didn't even realize it until I was like level sixty whatever in fucking Far Cry Arcade. I really wish is the more time you level up, like the more you level up in the game, the rewards you get would be more substantial. Cause the thing is I'm playing the I'm playing arcade after I beat the main game. So I'm like a fully upgraded character already, but I'm still getting perk points that I can't use. I have like 15 of the goddamn things and I can't use them on anything because there's nothing else to spend it on. So I really wish that like once you like hit like level 60 or something, they give you, I don't know, like a silver bar, maybe a hat, more money. Just anything to like be like, I can't believe you wasted like five days of your life on this shit. Finally, I did it. After four months, I made a review. Now it's time to walk outside in my map and check the sky and take in all the, the, the sights and sounds of the things I've created within Far Cry Arcade. Trademarked 2018. Oh, look at that. Far Cry 2's off in the distance. I'll see you guys in like three months. Maybe my narration will be better. Who knows? I don't know why I love you.